Every day, there is a new headline about the violence and unrest along the Mexican border. Drug cartels feuding, local officials gunned down, and of course, illegal immigrants streaming into the United States. Consider there have been 5,000 murders in Juarez in the last two years alone. For residents on this side of the border, the danger has literally spilled into their backyards, and one Texas town is ready to fight back. If you want to see what life is really like along the broken border between the United States and Mexico, come to Fort Hancock, Texas. I would not hesitate to fire this through these windows. This is a town where citizens are armed and ready. Morning, morning, morning. Sheriff, how are you doing? And if you stop in at Angie's restaurant, as pretty much everyone does, want some wine? You'll hear why. This violence is bleeding over, and it's bleeding over fast. I got people coming across on my way. And I have caught quite a few on my way. You know the Great Wall of China? <laughs> <laughs> we need a big old wall. You can see it from the moon and from the space shuttle, huh? And I mean a big wall. About 1,700 people live in Fort Hancock, which sits right on the banks of the Rio Grande River, not much more than a stream here, about 55 miles southeast of El Paso. They grow some cotton and chipotle here, do a little bit of this and that. It looks like a small Texas town right out of the movie No Country for Old Men. But it is under siege, as the sheriff, Arvin West, told us. So when, you're, when you come down to the border, you make sure you're... you're Absolutely. They have my side on. Sheriff West has 5,000 square miles of Texas to patrol. That's Hudspeth County and 98 miles of it along the border. He's got 17 deputies. You know, the way you describe it, Sheriff, it sounds like a, a low-intensity war. Oh, it's war. And on January 23rd, 2006, a war came to him. Auto! On that day, West and his deputies were involved in a fierce firefight with suspected Mexican drug runners who were using a Mexican military issue Humvee and weapons. They put out a contract on me and all the guys, all the deputies. They put out a contract? Mm -hmm. At one time, I was worth probably a quarter of a million dollars dead. Things have gotten so bad recently on that border and just across it in the Mexican town of El Porvenir that Arvin West recently gave the citizens of Fort Hancock a simple message arm yourselves. The saving grace here in America versus Mexico is Americans are allowed to arm themselves. Mm. Mexicans aren't. The bad guys don't know who can shoot back and who's, who's not going to shoot back because everybody can carry a gun in the United States that's not a convicted felon. That makes a difference. It makes a big difference. I don't need to reach out to the federal okay. government for reinforcement. When I just put the word out to my local citizens, they'll come armed and running. Now, maybe that sounds melodramatic or excessive to you, but this border is broken. Every day there are illegal crossings, mostly Mexicans just looking for a better life. But more and more, with so much of Mexico overrun by drug cartels, what people here see is something far more sinister. This guy He's getting over the barbed wire fence with some difficulty there. Right, he got caught on the fence. We visited a local couple who didn't want their identities revealed, which is why we're not showing their faces, just outside of town. They've installed a security camera on their roof, equipped with night vision. This is night. This is at night. I just happened to be work, doing work on my computer, so I just happened to see this person. They see a lot of people, sometimes in ones and twos, sometimes groups. A lot of the people that cross the border are drug dealers or gang members, and so it's just very scary. Like everyone else who lives here, this couple lives in a very different America from the rest of the country. So you are, in part, our nation's border security. I guess so. We're the first responders. You're the first responders. Certainly on this day, mm -hmm. you were, and your sense is that those four guys were what, migrants looking for work or bad guys? They, either one, you don't know. See, that's the biggest problem. What's happening in this rural Texas area is that the federal government has lost control of the border at the exact moment a lot of Mexico seems to be on the verge of turning into a narco state. In Juarez, Mexico, it's a state of war. 5,000 murders in the past two years. Police chiefs, judges, and city officials assassinated. A city living in terror and grief. And now that violence is moving down the border. Storm's coming, shut the windows, shut the doors, because it's fixing to get wet. Well, the storm's coming. 
And I noticed that you've got your deputies out here. We can't see what's on the other side of the levee over there. I'm sure they're watching us every move we're making over here. Sheriff West and I walked along the river, accompanied by armed deputies. And while we were standing there, homes on the Mexican side of the border went up in flames, a frequent occurrence as drug gangs torch the houses of anyone who resists their control. But there is a fence here, or some fence. So the American taxpayer spent money, put up this fence? Lots of money they spent here. And it runs right to here. The only, the only thing missing is a bienvenidos or the welcome sign on top of this. One of the big complaints you hear from locals in Fort Hancock is that the federal government, the Border Patrol especially, has essentially abandoned them. On one of the larger farms in the region, we spoke with Jim Ed and Craig Miller. We grew up with livestock and obviously we misunderstood how fences work. <laughs> we thought they had to be contiguous and surrounding the area. Didn't know you could just put up a little piece and it'd work. Jim Ed and Craig have spent their whole lives here. They're hardworking, hospitable people. They offered me some mountain lion stew they picked up at Angie's. Things like chicken or pork to you? A little more like pork. But the Miller brothers feel their way of life is changing, and changing fast. Greetings. I feel like uh, if we don't establish a, a definite border at the Rio Grande, if we retreat 50, 100 miles in, once this, that area is saturated with illegals, are they going to retreat another 50 miles? Retreat? That's a pretty strong word. Well, that appears to be what they've done here. Okay, they're going to be the first trophic level. At the high school, we spoke with a group of students, and they're pretty much like teens everywhere, good kids. But they've endured experiences your kids haven't. How many have ever heard gunfire from across the border? Raise your hand. A few. This is something you've heard? It's scary hearing it. Like, we're far away, but it's still scary, because you never know if what could happen? Some of our friends have family over there, and it's kind of sad that almost every month we have to say sorry for your loss. So this is life in Fort Hancock, a town on a broken border, a place someone here called Almost America. Armed citizens, watches in the night. The fires of a drug war across the border, a sheriff on the front line. Is our next move to try to come over here? You have to ask that question. Is that what they're after next? Don't know. Don't have the answer to that one. It's a serious question. It is.